Three days after they were introduced into federal parliament, the Senate has overturned Treasurer Josh Frydenberg's regulations on proxy advisors. Proxy advisors are the people who advise big investors, including superannuation funds, on how to vote on issues impacting the re-election of company directors. Board directors are increasingly being taken to task by superannuation funds and other big institutional investors on a broad range of issues from CEO pay and climate change to sexual harassment and money laundering. One week out from Christmas, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg passed regulation that would have stripped these advisors of their ability to provide their services under their existing financial services license within 52 days. On Wednesday, Independent Senator Rex Patrick moved to disallow the regulations and succeeded by 29 votes to 25. The new regulatory regime, which came into effect on February 7, lasted only three days. Senator Patrick's motion gained the support of the entire Senate crossbench, including One Nation. The Labour Party has sided with the Greens again to roll back reforms designed to improve the accountability and transparency of the proxy advice and superannuation sectors, my Frydenberg told the ABC. He said after voting against a number of other government reforms, the parties had voted against superannuation funds disclosing to their members how they voted on company resolutions. Our reforms were designed to strengthen the integrity of our corporate governance regime and ensure more consistent regulation across the financial services industry, Mr. Frydenberg said. Space to play or pause, M to mute, left and right arrows to seek, up and down arrows for volume. Watch duration, 3 minutes 19 seconds 3 minutes and 19 seconds federal government pushes reforms to reduce the influence of super funds. The Senate did its job. But Senator Patrick told ABC News the laws would have been detrimental for shareholders. The Senate did its job today, he said. This was bad law, crafted to please Josh Frydenberg's big business mates and political donors, and the Senate rightly rejected it. Rex Patrick says the regulations would have been detrimental for shareholders. ABC News, Tamara Pennicott. It's been wiped from the Federal Register of Legislation, hopefully forever. This has got to be a world record startup and shutdown of a regulatory regime. It lasted three days. It was one big thought bubble from the Treasurer that just wasted taxpayers' money and the Parliament's time. Green Senator Nick McKim called it a significant blow to the government's agenda of looking after its billionaire mates. We need far greater scrutiny of corporations in this country, not less, he said. Nick McKim says the defeat is a significant blow to the government's agenda of looking after its billionaire mates. ABC News, Ian Cutmore. This was nothing less than a naked attempt to shield the likes of Jerry Harvey and Solomon Liu from scrutiny and criticism. The Liberals should be ensuring that billionaires and big corporations pay their fair share of tax, instead of letting them off the hook in every way possible. Loading. Shadow Assistant Treasurer Stephen Jones said it was a great outcome for transparency and shareholders. Perhaps Josh Frydenberg can now spend his time dealing with real problems in the economy, not the invented problems, Mr Jones said. I congratulate all the senators who worked together on getting a good outcome. Stephen Jones says it is a great outcome for transparency and shareholders. ABC News, Matt Roberts. Government indulged crony capitalists, says proxy advisor. There are four proxy advisors in Australia, the Australian Council of Superannuation Investors, ACSI, CGI Glass Lewis, Ownership Matters and ISS. And they give big investors advice by way of written reports, as well as verbally. Ownership Matters co-founder and director Dean Parch said the entire exercise was a cluster fiasco. Dean Parch says senators stood up for the free market. Michael Barnett, ABC News. I thank the Senate, in particular Senator Patrick, Senator Jackie Lambie and One Nation, who were prepared to stand up for free market principles that the government abandoned, he said. It was profoundly disappointing that the government indulged crony capitalists and the major business lobbies at the expense of respect for property rights, 
the freedom to contract, and the right to confidential advice. He said the new laws weaponized financial services laws to punish advisors with hefty fines and would have slapped restrictions on advisors' access to capital, as well as adding constraints on who operators can employ or associate with. The regulations had added in a requirement for proxy advisors to send copies of their reports by email to ASX companies on the same day they deliver their advice to clients. Advisors were required to make notes of verbal conversations about voting issues with investors and send those records to the company, Mr. Parch said. He said this would have exposed advisors to fines of up to $11.1 million for companies and $1.1 million for individuals if the duties to report were breached. Australian Council of Superannuation Investors ACSI, Chief Executive Louise Davidson said she was pleased the unprecedented rules had been disallowed. Louise Davidson says there was no justification for the government's regulation. Supplied. One of the changes would have required proxy advisors to be independent of their clients, potentially signaling the end of ACSI's current model. The organization is owned by some of the nation's largest industry super funds. Proxy advisors play an important role in facilitating informed shareholder voting at listed Australian company meetings on a range of financially material issues, Ms Davidson said. The regulations were rushed through without parliamentary scrutiny and with no justification, rationale or harm identified. She said advisors would have faced more onerous red tape, including the fines of up to $11 million for small administrative errors. CPA Australia spokeswoman Jane Rennie said, It wasn't only that the substance of these reforms was bad, the purpose and processes underlying them were manifestly inadequate. Jane Rennie says the regulation would have reduced the accountability of boards. Supplied, CPA Australia. The reforms were made without adequate justification, explanation, consultation and consideration, she said. These are pretty fundamental requirements for good lawmaking. It's appropriate that they have been disallowed in the Senate. We were concerned that the reforms could limit investors' ability to exercise their voting rights by reducing their access to information about companies' practices and performance. This would in turn decrease the accountability of boards and management and deliver poor outcomes for shareholders, especially superannuation fund members. But Australian Institute of Company Directors AICD, Managing Director Angus Armour said they were disappointed that the regulations did not get up. The key substantive obligations of AFSL license holders are difficult to argue against, that licensees provide their financial services efficiently, honestly and fairly, have adequate conflict management arrangements in place, and comply with financial services laws, he said. Proxy advice is a profitable, global industry. Given its highly influential role in Australian markets, it is appropriate that proxy advice is regulated to these reasonable standards.